Good morning, friends. Let's continue our discussion on Abraham's walk with God. Abraham, a great man of faith, he cultivated the habit of knowing God and spending time with God. As we discussed in our previous video, though he was so close to God, at times he also did a lot of mistakes. But one thing that we learn from him is uh, he pitched his tent with an intention to know God. And one of the good things that we find in his life is Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Canaanites were the wicked people, a land filled with wickedness, idolatry, adultery, and fornication or not. They were all we see today the perversion in the society. It was there even in his time. No, the Lord wanted to give that land to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. To your offspring I will give this land. Now God gives his land to his people when they walk with him. This is the promise God is giving, giving me today, this morning. The Lord said, to your offspring, I will give this land. I moved from India to this U.S. And my children are prospering. My children are experiencing God. You know, we raised our children in the fear and in the knowledge of the word of God. And we left them here. <laughs> they became missionaries in this country. You know, this country, particularly U.S., um, need missionaries. Want this land, send missionaries to across the world. But today, there is a great need. Um, this land needs missionaries who can preach the gospel without compromising. Without compromising, we need preachers who can preach against pornography, adultery, divorce, euthanasia, abortion and what not. Everywhere I see people with compromising mindset. When you speak against sin, people will be against you. That's what I found here. You know, when you try to touch the concept of sin, people try to touch you. But that's okay. They did the same thing to Jesus. You know, Jesus never compromised. And his prophets throughout the Bible from the Genesis to Revelation, you see people did not compromise. And God needs such missionaries who can preach the word, turn people from sin to the light of God, help people to turn to God. Abraham was a righteous man. He never compromised um, with, the, uh, with the local cultures in the context. But of course, in his uh, weaknesses, when he was down in his spiritual life, God taught him lessons and he rose again. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. One of the secret of success in anyone's spiritual life is a personal altar with God. A worshipping time with God. When you get up early morning and you need to say good morning God. Good morning Holy Spirit. You know I just got up uh, praising God, thanking God and worshiping God. When you learn to have a worshiping time with the Lord in your home, you get success wherever you go. Now that's the secret. That's the thing we follow. My wife and I, we sit together with the children, praying and worshiping. Worship is a quickening. Worship quickens our consciousness. Worship is a quickening of our consciousness. Nourishment by the truth of the gospel in our mind. So our mind will be transformed into the thinking of God when we start worshipping God. 
Worship is not such a rules and regulations. Worship is something the spirit inclined with God. Abraham built an altar for God. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued toward Negeji. Now there was a famine in the land. Of course, he continued to enjoy the presence of God. But when there was a famine, he was not able to trust God. This do happen to us. We need to continue to trust God and understand God. This morning before I close, and I wanted to uh, give this one, emphasis, uh, one thought and emphasis. Worship, prayer, um, maybe spirituality and reading the Bible and, and all these um, spiritual disciplines should help us to Inclined with God, coming closer to God. You know, Jesus in, his, in John's Gospel, he clearly says to his disciples in, in, in that prayer, he says, Heavenly Father, as I am in you, you are in me. Let them be also in us. He was praying for disciples. The unity concept. When we grow in God, we need to be one with God, oneness in God. As an Indian, um, from growing up in a Hindu philosophical system, uh, I understand this very clearly because, you know, the Indian concept is oneness with God is the, the devotees, the bhaktas, the, uh, the worshipper has a great desire and a passion to be one with God. Of course, the concept is the, uh, the, the devotee, the bhakta, Try to merge into Bhagavan. No, wanted to completely um, merge into God, like a drop of water merging into an ocean of sea. Uh, the human beings try to be one with God. Of course, the biblical theology is different than that. that and uh, I don't believe that Hindu philosophical system, which is uh, not really. Um, make any sense to spirituality. This is what the biblical spirituality makes sense. The Jesus says a kind of concept that we need to be one with God. Of course, we are not merging into God, but we will have our own identity. <laughs> if I merge into God, there is no meaning for heaven because I cannot enjoy heaven. The biblical concept is this. In our prayer, we come closer and closer to God. We will not merge into God, but we will enjoy God. Prayer is nothing but enjoying God. In our altar, we sit with God, we read a Bible, and we pray to God. We enjoy the beauty of God's goodness. We listen to God in prayer. That's what. We need to cultivate in our lives. Abraham developed that attitude of knowing God. God speaks to us when we come closer and closer to God. This is one of the spiritual disciplines we need to cultivate. We cannot learn this by reading books or attending schools. It is an experience with God. The Anubhava of God. The more we come closer to God, the more we realize who we are. And we come closer and closer to God. May God bless you today and enjoy the day. Let's continue this teaching. Uh, I encourage you to be in touch with me if you are blessed. You know, keep some statements here. Or um, if you have any prayer request, ping me privately. I can pray for you. Let me pray for you before I conclude. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this blessed Monday morning here. Pray that this Monday may become a day of joy, peace, and happiness. Whatever we do, we may glorify the Heavenly Father. We may continue to reflect the nature of Christ in our attitudes, in our actions. And we may continue to lead people from sin to the light of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our discussions, our relations... Our attitudes, everything may reflect the nature of Christ. I pray that you give us opportunities to help people, to know God. I pray for my viewers. If anybody is in sick, I pray that you heal them. 
whatever the need they may get from the Lord Jesus Christ. I release your heavenly blessing on them. With all the authority from heaven, in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray that your blessings may come in a special way. Father, we thank you today. Help us to enjoy the grace of God. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my friend, for watching. Uh, let's continue to build our relationship in Christ. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. See you.